Hi, I'm Sidwick from Ratings.com. Today's subject is motion interpolation, which is also called the soap opera effect. The feedback we receive from you guys is you want us to go more in depth, so this video is a bit longer than the other ones. In this video, we'll talk about what it is, how it works, and the downsides of it. So let's get started. Motion interpolation is the feature that artificially increases the frame rate of the video by creating fake frames in between each frame. In the previous video, we saw that when we follow a moving object with our eyes, it results in a blur due to the frame rate and the eye persistence. So the goal of motion interpolation is to reduce the perceived motion blur by increasing the frame rate. A frame rate twice as fast will cut the persistence by half, since the distance between each frame is also cut by half. It also looks smoother, which is why some people don't like it, since it kills the cinematographic look. Some people call this the soap opera effect, as it looks similar to the way soap operas traditionally have looked on TV. Let's check what it looks like in practice using the Samsung KS8000, which is a 120Hz TV. Currently, it is receiving a 60 frames per second video, and if I turn on the motion interpolation feature, it will convert that 60 frames per second video into 120 internally. To show you what is happening, we'll record this in slow motion. With motion interpolation, one out of two frames is generated. This is an easy pattern to interpolate, since it is only a translation, so even the generated frames look great. The end result is not only a smoother look, but also less blur when you follow moving object with your eyes, as you can see in the motion blur pictures. It has less blur simply because each frames are closer together. It works well on that pattern, since it is a simple animation and the logo isn't moving very fast, but it doesn't work as well on real content. You can see that it creates some strange artifacts and errors around some moving objects. It kinda looks like things become a bit pixelated. Some people might confuse this with motion blur, since it looks like the moving objects becomes a bit blurrier due to the blocks appearing around them. So why are there artifacts? It all comes down to how the TV interpolates. The TV doesn't have time to do anything fancy, since it needs to do it in real time. I'm going to explain a simplified version of the algorithm that the TV uses. So let's take two frames, the first frame and the end frame, and the TV wants to create a frame in the middle. Since it needs to do it in real time, it's going to simplify a little bit the problem, and it's going to split each frame in two blocks. After creating the blocks, it's going to try to figure out where each block moves. For example, in this case, this group of blocks moves to here. So it's going to do that for every block. Some blocks are not going to move. For example, this one stays here. After it's done for everything, then it can generate the final frame in the middle. So for the middle frame, it's going to put each block in the middle of the translation path. So in this group of blocks, the middle is here. So it goes down two blocks, to the right three blocks. So in the middle frame, it's down one block and to the right 1.5 block. So it does that for all the blocks and then it can generate the final picture. This works very well for translation. For example, in a panning shot. Panning shot, it's easy since a big part of the screen that moves slowly. So it's easy to find blocks and match them. But anything more complex, like a rotation or even an explosion, then that's going to be hard to do by the TV. For example, in a rotation. Rotation, the center is easy to do since it almost looks like a translation. But the edges are harder since it's new information that comes up. The TV is going to try to match it. It's going to try to copy paste blocks from around the screen that look similar to the edges. But it's not going to look pretty, so it's going to look like the artifacts that we saw earlier. Let's take a more difficult example, like a car explosion. In a car explosion, the first frame is a car, and the second frame, a big explosion. So in that case, it's really hard for the TV to know what's between the two frames. So it has two options. In the first option, it's going to try to guess. So it's going to try to find blocks that are somewhat similar and copy-paste them. But that's going to create a lot of artifacts. The second option is a lot safer. It's not going to try to do anything. It's simply going to repeat the first frame a second time. So in that case, it will create a little bit of judder on the screen, since that frame is going to appear on the screen a little bit longer, and then it's going to be smooth again. 
The hard part of that algorithm is all about creating the motion vectors. That process is similar to encoding in a codec like H.264. In H.264, there are keyframes once in a while and then the blocks move in between each frames. But the H.264 codec doesn't have the constraint of doing it in real time, so the end result is a lot better. Most TVs have two sliders to control the motion interpolation. They both interpolate up to 120Hz, but they affect different content. Blur reduction affects 60 frames per second content, and jutter reduction 30 and less. Currently, there's a 30 frames per second video playing on the TV, and if I turn on blur reduction, you will see it has no impact at all on the picture. For this video, it is jutter reduction that has an impact. So if I turn it on, you will see that it is smoother. Now with the 60 frames per second video, you can see that the picture is not interpolated at all, even with jutter reduction on. But if I turn on blur reduction instead, you can see that it now works. You will notice that I didn't change the signal sent to the TV. In both cases, it was 60 Hz. So the TV tries to guess what is the real frame rate of the content, but sometimes it's going to get a little bit confused between the two sliders. The slider values affect the threshold of detection for the motion vectors as well as the output frame rate. So if you want a smoother look on panning shot but don't want to risk artifacts, set it to around 4. If you want to smooth everything and don't mind the errors, set it to max. Now let's look at what motion interpolation looks like on a 6-yard TV like this Samsung KU6300. Since it is a 6-yard TV, it won't be able to increase the frame rate on a 60 frames per second video, which is why there's no blur slider in the menu. It still can interpolate lower frame rate like 30 yards though, but it won't be as smooth like on a 120 yards TV, since it will convert a 30 frame rate to 60 instead of 120. In our reviews, we test whether the TV can interpolate 30 and 60 Hz, but we don't evaluate how good the motion interpolation is, because in 90% of the cases, it's the same for all TVs, even across brands. Another downside of the interpolation feature is the input lag. Since that feature is not available in game mode, it always comes with a higher input lag. For example, on the Samsung Q7F, it's currently in game mode, so the input lag is good, but if I go out of game mode, the input lag is high, which is not really playable unless you really want the effect. So in conclusion, motion interpolation increases artificially the frame rate of the video, which is great to increase the smoothness of the movements and to reduce the appearance of motion blur. But it comes with three downsides. First, purists say that it kills the cinematographic look because movements look too real. Second, it adds artifacts and even frame drops from time to time. And third, it increases input lag, which is bad for gaming. So that's it. If you like this video, subscribe to our channel and see you next time.